this is the review that y'all really wanted to see, the Lowrider ST. Today is day two of the Harley-Davidson press ride in Santa Barbara, California, and I'm getting the opportunity to test ride the highly anticipated 2022 Lowrider ST, the newest addition to the Softail lineup. The ST was built with a clear purpose, to be a showroom-ready, sport-touring Softail with style and performance. And as someone who's built their own motorcycle out with these factors in mind, the ST is definitely a bike that's caught my eye to be the next bike I purchase. But will it be a better choice for me over the Road Glide Special, a Grand American Touring motorcycle with a $6,000 price tag jump over the ST? Today, I'm getting my first chance to figure that out and hopefully help you make a decision for yourself on whether or not the Lowrider ST is right for you. Unlike the fully redesigned Sportster Nightster we rode yesterday, the Lowrider ST is simply a new model in the already established Softail chassis. And while the Softail lineup has plenty of great models available, like the Lowrider S and Heritage, which are a few of my favorites, the Lowrider ST really merges the gap between the current Softail models and touring bikes as the premier sport touring option, just as the name suggests. New for 2022, the motor company has shoved their power-packed 117 Milwaukee 8 motor into the ST. Before this, it was only available in the Grand American Touring CVO models. To have this type of power in a lighter, more nimble chassis like the Softail is pretty appetizing. Additionally, the ST boasts dual disc front brakes, inverted forks, mid-controls, removable saddlebags, and a raised handlebar setup, giving it a pretty aggressive yet comfortable seating position right out of the gate. And of course, the fully redesigned FXRT inspired frame mounted fairing. So yeah, this is right up my alley in regards to being a perfect platform to get started out on with doing a bit of touring riding. Enough quick specs. Let's dive into the ergonomics and handling of the Lowrider ST. I actually got multiple comments during the day's ride saying that the bike fit me like a glove. And personally, I'd have to agree. Immediately upon hitting the freeway, the ergonomics of this bike felt all too familiar. The stock seating position and handlebar setup were similar to that of my Dyna. And with a 27 inch seat height, it was less than intimidating to throw a leg over. As someone that's 5'4 with a 30 inch inseam, I can say that the stock positioning of the ST is great for people with a smaller stature. I've seen quite a few reviews online from people over six feet tall saying that they felt cramped. But if you're height impaired like myself, I think you'll actually really enjoy the way this bike feels right off the showroom floor without needing to spend additional time or money accessorizing it to fit you. That's one area that the ST definitely wins in the Road Glide purchase debate. I definitely favor the Lowrider ST's factory handlebar setup in comparison to those found on the Road Glide. I definitely have to spend a few thousand dollars on parts and labor to get the seating position of the Road Glide to fit me better. So if you're looking for a bike that you can just jump on and go without needing to heavily customize it right out of the gate, I would highly recommend the ST for that aspect alone. I really do think that the motor company did a great job listening to its customers' wants and needs on the Lowrider ST in this regard. As far as handling goes, the Milwaukee 8 Softail chassis, not to be confused with its twin cam predecessor, really does give a bit of a confidence boost when it comes to its handling. Whether you need to make a slow speed U-turn or are carving a canyon on a soft tail, it just feels planted underneath you, even with the stock suspension. These bikes are balanced extremely well and it's just a much more nimble bike in certain situations than the larger and heavier touring specific bike like the Road Glide. The overall handling of the soft tail chassis in comparison to the touring lineup has its pros and cons and are going to vary from rider to rider. Personally, I prefer the handling of the soft tail over the larger touring bikes for around town or even day rides. And while road glides and other touring models definitely provide more comfort on long hauls, the soft tail is a great contender for comfort, especially for someone of my stature and overall health. I'm in my early 30s, have minor lower back issues, and can comfortably do 500 mile days on my Dyna. Sure, upgrading to a touring bike would make my rides feel like a literal road sofa, but the ST still provides enough levels of comfort to make it worth considering. Lastly, I really enjoyed the fixed fairing on the ST and felt that it did a great job cutting the wind while still providing some airflow through the vent. Like many people who have voiced their opinions on social media, I was hesitant when I first saw photos of this bike online. 
but once I got to see it in person, the fairing grew on me a bit. I'd love to see the motor company offer a lower fairing option similar to the FXRT, but when I asked if this was in the plans, I was told that they currently had no intentions of making any accessories such as that for the Lowrider ST. And even if they did, they legally wouldn't be able to tell me, so we'll see what happens in the future. I'd definitely consider installing a taller windshield on long hauls if I was going to purchase the Lowrider ST. For whatever reason, the wind buffeting seemed to hit right at my helmet's visor, and on longer trips with hundreds of highway miles, I'd want that wind to be pushed just a little bit further over my head. Ironically, on the road glide, I don't get any air to my face with the stock windshield setup. So on hot summer days, it's a bit stuffy riding that big old bike with a full face on. Is that your jam? Apparently more than well my jam, yeah. <laughs> There's only one thing I've ever loved as much as motorcycles, and that's music. The Rockford audio kit was one of the biggest things that appealed to me about the new ST. As much as I love using a Bluetooth communication system on my helmet, I really enjoy the ability to listen to music straight from the bike itself. After getting to ride the Roguelite in Arkansas for a week, it was really hard to go back to just utilizing my headset on my Dyna. Unfortunately, I couldn't hear the audio as well as I had hoped at highway speeds on the Lowrider ST. And there's a couple of factors that probably played into this. One, the wind noise from my helmet as I was testing out a budget-friendly helmet option that weekend, and two, as I previously mentioned, the wind buffeting coming off the stock windshield. These things are going to vary from rider to rider tremendously. Perhaps if I had worn a higher-end helmet with less wind noise and or had a higher windshield installed, my opinion would be a bit different. Overall, the sound was definitely there, as you can see me singing along in a few of these clips. If you're planning to ride this bike around town at speeds lower than 70 mile per hour most of the time, I think you'll really enjoy the audio kit. If you're planning to spend most of your times at speeds higher than that, you might be left looking for an extra notch or two on the volume controls. Which brings me to my next observation. This audio system is exceptionally hard to control while riding in comparison to Harley's actual touring models. If I was gonna buy this bike, you definitely wanna have something to control the audio while you're riding it. Okay. Because I wanted to turn it up once we left and I, I can't control my phone. Unlike the Roguelite and other touring models that feature touchscreens and hand controls to manage the infotainment system, the ST does not have any of this since the audio system is offered as an accessory. There is an audio-specific app offered by Harley-Davidson to give extra control of the audio on your phone, but it's not a necessity to use the system. Unless you use a phone mount or buy an additional accessory to control the audio kit from your handlebars, you'll have minimal control over the audio. This isn't a make or break for me, but the current audio offerings for the touring bikes from Harley-Davidson, in addition to the aftermarket world, are definitely more appealing. But as more of these bikes hit the streets, I'm sure aftermarket options will come out over time that will fit my wants and needs. So the ST is fast, it's fun, it handles well in the city, on the highway, and definitely in the canyons. But is it really touring ready like the name suggests? The ST comes standard with quick release waterproof saddlebags that hold a combined 53 liters of luggage. Now, that's a good start, but you're definitely going to need to add a sissy bar or other luggage accessory to this bike in order to fit all of your road trip necessities. For reference, I use two 20 liter dry bags to hold most of my camping gear on the back of my Dyna. So 53 liters will hold most of your clothes if you're good at packing light on a trip. The Rogue Glide definitely takes the cake in the luggage capabilities in the saddlebag category. Both the ST and Rogue Glide saddlebags are waterproof and can be locked, which is a plus over purchasing bags like I currently use on my own Dyna. And I think the biggest gripe that I hear from people online about the Lowrider ST's bags is that they're asymmetrical, which is true. But after riding behind multiple STs all day, I can say that it's really not that noticeable. That is, if you're going to keep the stock exhaust. Obviously, if you plan to customize your bike, that might make the size difference a bit more noticeable. Ultimately, any bike can be a touring bike. It's simply up to you to decide what you need to fulfill that goal of hitting the open road comfortably and confidently. Personally, I don't need Harley's Grand American Touring chassis to be comfortable. I can easily do 500 mile days on a soft tail. I also travel solo on my bike, meaning I can store more luggage where a passenger would normally be sitting. If carrying a passenger is a factor that you're considering for yourself, well, that's where a touring bike definitely wins this entire debate in regards to storage and overall comfort. For me, I can confidently see myself putting a deposit down on a Lowrider ST and really enjoying it as my next cruiser-styled bike instead of the Roguelide Special. 
I really enjoy the Softail in far more scenarios than I do the Touring platform. Plus, it's got all the features I'd want in a bike with room to still customize it to my liking. And hopefully, you'll enjoy it too. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below about the new Lowrider ST that maybe weren't answered in this video. And I'll see y'all on the road. Later, y'all.